study 1 Timothy chapter 6. This is much smaller than the other one that I have.
the Lord and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The word of God comes then from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2. The word Father meant to them an initiator. That is a person who starts things. For example, we can say that you've heard it said that James Brown is the Godfather of soul. Just because he was the one that brought that particular genre of music and development, the initiator. Father is also somebody that is revered. In the Greco-Roman world, he was respected. He was the old man of the family. He was a teacher. He was the ancestor. Of course, father referred to parents and their responsibility to the home. And then it refers to that genealogical and legal person in the home. You know, from a sociological perspective, the head of the household was to be understood as father. Many of the philosophers who were in Paul's day understood father as a kingly kind of person, the elder, the benefactor, superior to his children, and the children were expected to be subject to him. Don't even contradict, you know, just the father said it, that's it. Of course, father for many were teachers who lovingly imparted the, the word and example and hopefully engendered a whole uh, good resolve and taught how to be brave in action as Philo would have said. On the Roman law, for example, fathers held all the authority and power vested in the house until they died. They were absolutely in charge. Like my father would say to his seven sons and four daughters, under my jurisdiction, as though he's a judge, <laughs> we were not supposed to do A, B, and C as long as we are under his jurisdiction and making my house. That's as far as his jurisdiction went. Good morning, fellas, kings and queens. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a weekly vlog where I take you guys along um, a week in my life. If you guys are new here, hello king or queen, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy your time over here. I hope you like to take care of the mind, the body, the soul, and the self. If you guys are OG subscribers, families, welcome back. The UTs, absolutely wonderful to have you, royalty. I am currently on my way to a client church, where it's awesome, and I just want to take this time out to say happy Father's Day. Well, belatedly, because by the time you guys see this, all the kings on the channel, you guys would have celebrated Father's Day already. So happy Father's Day. Belatedly, all the women in your life made you feel extra special, okay? <laughs> so today is a full day. It was actually supposed to be a rest day for me. I wanted to do my skincare today, like a clay mask and everything. I really wanted to get back onto that bandwagon of doing my skincare. I do my skincare, but I've not been masking as I should, hence why I have outbreaks and stuff. Breakouts, outbreaks, you breakouts and stuff. So yeah i'm gonna probably have to i'm going to probably have to <laughs> do it tomorrow god's will evening, guys um i'll finish with my client so we are on our way to bush park today is a father's day special that's going on with dexterity and all that different type of things so we're gonna go ahead and it's supposed to finish at nine o'clock as well today so we're just gonna enjoy the balance of the day there okay so we made it in let me just shout out Stephanie. I hope I got your name right, Queen. She was like hailing me from afar. I was like, who is this? But she asked me who she was. So thank you very much for your thought, Queen. We will definitely keep it in consideration. But thank you very, very much. And for all of your subscriptions. I'm looking forward to your likes and I'm looking forward to your comments as well, Queen. Where are we gonna go in now? So I'll look around a little bit more and see what's going on. And yeah, take you guys with us. Sean, you ready? Daddy. On the count of three, just 
study First Timothy chapter six, flawless beauties, and it reads: All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect, so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Those who have believing masters are not to show less respect for them because they are brothers. Instead, they are to serve them even better because those who benefit from their service are believers and dear to them. These are the things you are to teach and urge on them. In Paul's culture, there was a great social and legal gulf separating masters and slaves. But as Christians, masters and slaves became spiritual equals, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Paul did not speak against the institution of slavery, but he gave guidelines for Christian slaves and Christian masters. His counsel for the master-slave relationship can be applied to the employer-employee relationship today. Employees should work hard, showing respect for the employers. In turn, employers should be fair. Our work should reflect our faithfulness to and love for Christ. Good morning, flawless beauties. Welcome back to another day in the vlog. Today is actually Friday, guys. I've not vlogged the entire week. So I'm on my way home. Just dropped me off from work. Today is a full, full day. I'm going to take you guys along with me. When I get back home, it is a matter of finishing up the vlog that you guys have gotten this funny day with me finishing that up also I have to head into town because I have to look for a white outfit because we're asked to wear white white dress and either gold or bronze shoes I don't have bronze shoes I may get bronze shoes because I do have bronze bags but I don't have bronze shoes so we'll see I don't know and we're heading to cricket so if you guys don't know the World Cup is here some of the matches are playing in Barbados and one of my uh, vlogs you guys would have seen that we went to cricket which was really good my father really enjoyed himself that is not coming with us today he's coming with us to Sunday right so that is about it so when I head home it is a matter of hanging the clothes out so that they can dry then I have to get ready I'll either get ready or edit the finish edit the video one of the two that video should not take long because it's not a long video either way Continuing our study of First Timothy chapter 6, the subheading is Love of Money. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, he is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strive, malicious talk, evil suspicions and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Paul told Timothy to stay away from those who just want to make money from preaching and from those who strayed from the sound teachings of the gospel into quarrels that caused strife in the church. A person's understanding of the finer points of theology should not become the basis for lording it over others or for making money. Stay away from people who just want to argue. This statement 
verse 6 is the key to spiritual growth and personal fulfillment. We should honor God and center our desires on Him, that godliness. And we should be content with what God is doing in our lives. Despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary, most people still believe that money brings happiness. Rich people craving greater riches can be caught in an endless cycle that only ends in ruin and destruction. How can you keep away from the love of money? Paul gives us some guidelines. 1. Realize that one day riches will all be gone. 2. Be content with what you have. 3. Monitor what you are willing to do to get more money. 4. Love people more than money. 5. Love God's work more than money. 6. Freely share what you have with others. It is often helpful to distinguish between needs and wants. We may have all we need to live, but let ourselves become anxious and discontent over what we merely want. Like Paul, we can choose to be content without having all that we want. The only alternative is to be a slave to our desires. So I edited the video. The video took much longer than I anticipated, but I edited the video and I'm on my way down to town. I also picked up all of the laundry from off of the line. Everything is nice and dry. I am yet, or we are yet to fold them, but definitely going to fold them eventually. I don't know if it's going to be today. Normally we would fold our laundry on the same day, but I am like crunched for time. I literally want to be in town for one hour, one hour. So I am going to be walking with the hit with like there is a fire beneath my booty girl <laughs> that's the speed i am going to be walking with because leaving town it is not after one o'clock and leaving town around that time is very difficult and i know to get back home it will probably take me an hour and babe wants to get i think he said he has to get on the road for 5 30 because he's actually working they asked him to work so he has to get down the road for 5 30. So I am thinking I may have to leave home about say 4.30 to get to him then to get down the road so I have a, that space <clears throat> to get back home and to get ready. <clears throat> so yeah. So that was a waste guys, I found nothing, I actually found a dress but I would have just bought that dress to buy an address say because it really and truly was not myself. It was just something to buy for that thing to fit the color scheme, it was nothing that I wanted. So I will have to end up wearing something that I have hope, putting together something I have hope, something I didn't want to do because I didn't want that, you know, I take my clothes I would prefer to keep for out to wear to church you know what I mean so either way so that's where we are at in terms of the shoes bronze is a bad word <laughs> in town you usually find those colors around Christmas time or so and then to find gold nice gold shoes not really so the places that I looked I found nothing so I'm on my way home. I went through Tudor Street. I went through Swan Street. I went through that street that is at the, that is at the back of Cape Shepherd. Those are the areas where I looked. I didn't go Broad Street, and uh, neither did I go Robert Street. I should have gone Tiffany's to see if they had anything in there. But then there is also a here by the bus terminal over the bridge in that area but I didn't have the time to take a look over there so I'm on my way home we are on our way to Kensington Oval I had everything mixed up so I had more than enough time to do my makeup and get ready so baby's here he's driving down he has his pass around his head because as mentioned before he's going to work so yeah let's take in some cricket guys
Please welcome the Barbados National Cultural Foundation Pre-Game Entertainment featuring the soca artist, the underdog himself, the hyperdog himself, Lil Wick. Continuing our study of 1 Timothy chapter 6, let us begin our continuation scene from verse 11. Yes, 11. And the subheading is Paul's charge to Timothy. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot our blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Paul uses active and forceful verbs to describe the Christian life, like flee, pursue, fight, take hold. Some think Christianity is a passive religion that advocates waiting for God to act. But we must have an active faith, training, working hard, sacrificing and doing what we know is right. Is it time for action on your part? Christian service, like athletics, requires training and sacrifice. 
our discipline and obedience largely define whether or not we will be contributors or merely spectators. How would other believers rank your contributing role on Christ's team? Jesus' trial before Pilate is recorded in the Gospels, and here they all are. Some, Matthew chapter 27, verses 11 to 26, and you can also check Luke chapter 23, verses 1 to 25, and there's also some in Mark and John. Good morning, fellas, kings and queens. Today is Saturday, and I am prepped and ready for a pedicure. My client is coming, supposed to be coming for nine, but he is running a bit late. But I have breakfast, and I forgot I wanted to record that breakfast with you guys. Anyways, um, you know what it was, it's Saturday, so that is Wednesday. Yeah, pancakes, banana pancakes, and scrambling. I had some fruit as well with that. I really, really am not liking having fruit with my breakfast. Like, really, I'm liking it. That, that papa really jump started me. So, I'm just gonna sit and wait until he gets here. I did some confirmation for some clients, girl. <laughs> so, I'm not waiting um, on him only. I'm just going to skim through on my social media pages now. See if anyone sent a message on any of them for anything. Make sure I'm covered and clear because today is Saturday. And tomorrow we're going to cricket again. Clients all happy, guys. I am on my way to another client. It is actually a lot later. It's 3 o'clock right now. And uh, this is my final client for the day. Yes, it is. So it is for her birthday. My really chicken, why did you cross the road? <laughs> so my client today was actually a male. That's why you saw the blue flowers. And he is a teacher. I absolutely love when he comes to get his pedicures and because I get update to or up to date with all the happenings of school life and you know the, the difficulties of our next generation and social media Ooh. <laughs> social media is playing such a big part of our youth's lives and the way in which they speak, the way in which they, they are, like their culture, you know, is not Bajan anymore. And we as a village need to understand that influence so that they sh we can, one, shape them accordingly, and two, make sure that they are being influenced by the correct things. I was, you know, he, he was telling me that about situations like, you know, where children will come to him and tell him certain things and so forth. Um, one thing that has gone through the edders <laughs> is that they don't value uh, their virginity. It is a thing of the past to have your virginity or to even be a virgin, to stay on the boat. That's the terminology. So I was like, what? So I told him, my advice to him was read up a bit more about what the word says about virginity so that you have a better knowledge and understanding about what the word says. So you can advise them accordingly. And he, he agreed. Just because for me personally, I said to him, well, when I was going to school, even when I was a, a Christian, I really had little to no idea or understanding about what the word says about virginity. The most thing that I got about virginity was the Virgin Mary. <laughs> that was it. That's all I knew or understood about virginity. So I told him when I read the word of God and I realized what the word said about virginity and like keeping your virginity and so forth. I was like, really? Uh, how the Lord sees a virgin and what it means, you know, to Almighty. I was just wowed by it. So I was like, oh, I didn't know all of this about virginity. So uh, I told him to read up a bit more about it. 
so that when these times come, he will better be better able to advise them, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and figure out where to park properly. <laughs> and then get to my client. I'll finish with my client. Nice, simple, soft, beautiful makeup. I am on my way now to collect a package for a repost. Ew. And then I'm going to head home. This, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the package is. It could be some items to condense my makeup kit. I think that that is what should be coming in next. If not, it might be my birthday dress. <laughs> if it's my birthday dress, I'm not going to show you guys. But if it's the packaging, I would definitely show you guys the packaging. Now we are actually closing the book of First Timothy. And we're closing on chapter 6, continuing from verse 17. It reads, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge. What some have professed and in so doing have wandered from the faith. Grace be with you. Ephesus was a wealthy city and the Ephesian church probably had many wealthy members. Paul advised Timothy to deal with any potential problems by teaching that having riches carries great responsibility. If you have been blessed with wealth, then thank the Lord. Don't be proud and don't trust in your money. Use your money to do good. Be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. No matter how much money you have, your life should demonstrate that God controls the wealth that he has placed under your care. The book of First Timothy provides guiding principles for local churches, including rules for public worship and qualifications for overseers, such as elders and pastors, deacons, and special church workers, like those widows mentioned. Paul tells the church leaders to correct incorrect doctrine and to deal lovingly and fairly with all people in the church. The church is not organized simply for the sake of organization, but so that Christ can be honored and glorified. While studying these guidelines, don't lose sight of what is most important in the life of the church, which is knowing God, working together in loving harmony, and taking God's good news to the world. Back home guys, so I'm going to go ahead and unbox the package because it is not my birthday suit and no, you don't see my address. So let's get a pair of scissors. This, I mean, I don't know. You know what? Let me let you see what it is because I know what it is. And this is my new makeup table because my other one is much bigger than this. And you guys already know that I'm condensing and so on, so on and so forth. So I wanted a smaller table, one that I can put on top of my makeup bag. When it all comes together, I'm going to show you what it looks like. But this is the makeup table. This is much smaller than the other one that I have. And it comes up to a pretty good height 
also so we have these cute little short legs here and these legs extend out as well let me just lock it in and i will show you that this store these oh, let me show you above part that those are the legs that extend out so when i'm ready what i will do is simply put them back in this area right here because this is what is holding them put them back in this area right here where i'm packing up fold the legs up and put the beginning of it how it looked at first right on top of my bag laying flat and we're rolling out so i it really helps with the packing and unpacking and all of that good stuff that i don't want to be doing going forward So I placed it next to my makeup chair so you guys can have an idea of its height and I want that when I'm placing my bag on top of this I can work from my bag without like bending over too much or anything like that I do believe that this is its highest if not um, that's fine I'm quite cool with what it is but if it's uh, going to a location where I do not need to have a table I can simply just keep this to a side because it collapses pretty small so yeah that is it guys I'll see you guys in the next video bye for now don't forget to hit that circle button to subscribe to my channel and here are two more of my videos. See you soon!